Kia ora and a warm welcome to everywhere I'm from. So in today's episode, I am going to offer a very personal reflection that may or may not be right for you to hear right now because it's on the theme of grief. Okay, so I hope you'll stay, but if not, I will see you in the next one, okay? So to everyone staying, a warm welcome. So today is Matariki. It's um, a really special event in the Māori calendar. It's, it celebrates the Māori New Year one of the things about Matariki that is really beautiful is that it's an opportunity to really reflect on our ancestors and those who have passed in the last year and have the the strange privilege of remembering how complex and strange grief is because I recently lost a member of my extended family um, in the UK so not in the country where I'm living right now but where I'm from and unfortunately it was a very um, unpleasant ending for this person in many ways it was quite harsh you know not not a peaceful passing and that really makes things more difficult as well for the family, for his immediate family, and for me and my family, we're all connected. Um, And this is a person I hadn't seen for a long time, but was very much uh, part of my world. Someone I treasured and loved very much and very strange to me to think I will never see him again. It's it's absolutely unbelievable still. Yeah, it's, it's really quite shocking, but also I wanted to share about it because Grief is such a universal theme that unfortunately touches us all at some point. We will all have to grieve at some point for something or someone that we've loved and lost. And so it seemed a really good opportunity to perhaps transform some of this sadness into light for others on their path. And if you or someone who has lost a loved one recently, you know, my heart goes out to you. I send you so much love and and warm wishes for your journey and I think that's the point really it is a journey and it's a strange one you know I I said to some friends recently oh look I'm probably not going to be very you know with it in the the next few days because um I just had this really bad news and I don't know how my energy will be I just wanted to set the expectation that I might not be very available and it turns out that I'm actually okay right now right One of the things that puts me in a unique position is obviously being a therapist. I can actually analyse my own dreams. I feel as though there's a great privilege in that and a great blessing in that. Even though it's not to say, you know, we're impervious to (laughs) the normal, uh, you know, vagaries and, and difficulties of life as therapists. We're not. We're absolutely not. But I do think there's something powerful about being able to make sense of the path that you're on and this path of grief, which is, you know, very non-linear. I've spoken about this elsewhere, grieving and, and the sorrow of, of having lost someone or, or even a divorce, something that's not about death, but definitely a transition and a loss. It's not linear and I think we shouldn't expect it to be. It's really wonderful when we can give ourselves space and grace and rest. And I think because these things come intuitively to me, I have in place a lot of things that maybe others may not immediately have, you know, as resources to access and to be aware of the things that we need when we're in this kind of phase of life of, of you know, farewelling somebody. We can use the gifts and the tools that we have to actually move ourselves forward. But it's not about rushing. I think our culture, the Western culture is not very good at grief. It's not very good at understanding um, the fact that it's non-linear, the fact that, you know, it's all good and well if someone loses a, a husband or a wife or a, a child, you know, community may gather for a while, make casseroles and, and be there. But after a while, what I hear so often is that this falls away quite quickly. And then I think people just shrug their shoulders, not really knowing what to do or the person who is grieving effectively do nothing. And I think most of us will have had that experience by the time we're adults and mature adults we've had an experience where particularly when it's not someone close to you but someone you care about they're grieving it's hard to know what to do exactly because there's no rule book there's no guide and it's different every time I think guidance I can probably give you if again if you're in that position of knowing somebody who's going through grief is just to offer love from your heart you know be be as sincere as you can but don't don't beat yourself up trying to figure out what do I need to do? What do I need to say? 
I think we need to accept to some degree that we will often get it wrong, unfortunately. But there are many guides out there in terms of what to say and what not to say to someone who's grieving. So I definitely advise, you know, checking those out, use the resources that we have. The internet exists, Google exists, you know, so we don't have to be fumbling in the dark that much. Matariki for me this year will be a chance to reflect with hope. My life here in Aotearoa means that I have the great privilege of being deeply connected to the land and nature all around me. I live in a spectacularly beautiful place. It was very easy for me to look up at the stars, which I do almost nightly. But wherever I am, I always feel connected to the universe because that's what I'm passionate about. I don't really care for, you know, indoor things really I'm, I'm much more of a nature girl and luckily I'm married to someone who's much the same so you know and this reflected in everything I share with you often the scenes you're seeing are from places that we visited and and loved or even places that we we often visit you know I think that helps enormously as well that could be useful for you if if you're unfortunately in a similar position and reflecting on the passing of someone you love I think connecting to nature can be so healing right so we'll definitely be looking up at the stars and remembering this loved one who was a really gentle beautiful soul a wonderful father, an incredible friend, and um, just a really salt of the earth kind of person. We'll be so greatly missed. As I say, my friends, it's um, it's always shocking when we lose someone, but especially when we lose them and they're still in the prime of their life, and the more so when there is violence attached to the death. And, and it wasn't a crime. It wasn't like a, a criminal kind of violence, which I think, again, is another category of difficulty. I add these these extra elements because again just in case anyone is listening who's had a loss that has been a result of a murder or something really egregious. I want you to know that those kinds of losses require specialist care and tension and that you know we should never expect ourselves just to snap out of something so so painful like that so it's important to know that you know there's nothing wrong with you and that grief takes time you know and it, it doesn't flow the way we think you know as I say I'm feeling okay you know right now which is not what I expected to be feeling but I think um a lot of factors help and I think the more support we have in our lives the more love the more we can feel connected to ourselves and to our environment to nature the more we can move through these difficult phases of life with a little bit more ease right it doesn't make it easy but it just gives us a little bit of grace so do hold space for yourself for grace this matariki this this era whatever you're going through always hold grace for yourself space to be human and to be imperfect and to allow for the ebb and flow of life and your energy with it so with that my loves i offer you my heartfelt good wishes and thanks for being here with me as always if you're new to my channel a really warm welcome to you i'm gwendolyn and the food fano and i really encourage you to subscribe like this video if you've liked it and leave me a comment okay these all these things really help the channel and help other people access the resources that i've made over a decade more than a decade being on youtube that often never see the light of day because people don't like videos we, we don't always realize that how we can express our gratitude or you know share something that we found meaningful with others and also then help the creator these things are really important if you care about the people whose resources you make use of and enjoy so with that my loves i look forward to seeing you in the next one have a wonderful day kia ora.